Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, good greetings, everyone. A warm welcome to the third Dresden Nexus Conference. I am Sasha Kuoshima, the Deputy Director of Land and Water at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you all for this year's conference on the theme, Circular Economy in a Sustainable Society. And many thanks to the organizers of UNU Flores for inviting me and to all the dedicated members of the organizing committee for graciously holding this virtual event. I know that as we gather for this virtual event, the ongoing pandemic is at the forefront of our minds and that many individuals are working day after day on the front lines of this uncertainty. Around the world, we're seeing that agriculture and food systems are straining to accommodate the shifting needs and resource constraints brought on by this pandemic making resiliency and sustainability of our food systems even more important than ever as we strive for more sustainable and resilient agriculture systems by managing the complex interactions between water, soil, waste, energy, and the food nexus. I'd like to focus my presentation on FAO's agriculture, water, energy, food nexus agenda. Society's success in achieving ongoing food security will depend on its ability to sustain water, soil, energy, and other basic resources required for food production, all of which are threatened by global environmental change, urbanization, and industrialization. We know that we must do more to meet the challenges ahead of us. We have growing populations. More than 50% are in urban areas. And the demand for sustainable solutions dealing with the resource constraints and the changing climate is ever more greater. We're faced with the twin challenges of increasing productivity to feed a growing world population while at the same time reducing agriculture's environmental footprint. To address these uh, twin challenges, it's vital that we pursue innovation for governments to implement science-based policies and regulations. Our vision at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization includes the food transformation system that's innovative and inclusive, and we strongly believe agriculture is a large part of the solution in the nexus approach. To give some of the perspectives from FAO, I will transition to some figures shown in this PowerPoint presentation. Water is important in agriculture as it accounts for 70% of total freshwater withdrawals. At the same time, the food production and supply chain consumes about 30% of the total global energy. Of the 7 billion people on Earth today, 2.5 billion have no access to electricity. And 2.8 billion live in high water stress areas. By 2035, energy consumption will increase by 35% and water will increase by 85%. Climate change is already exacerbating water and energy challenges. To a great extent, many energy models do not address water constraints in an integrated manner. WEF as a tool to address water scarcity. As demand grows, there's increasing competition for resources between water, energy, agriculture, fisheries, livestock, forestry, mining, transport, and other sectors with unpredictable impacts for livelihoods on the livelihoods and the environment. For example, large-scale infrastructure projects have, may have synergistic impacts, producing hydropower and providing water storage for irrigation and urban uses. However, this might happen at the expense of downstream agroecological systems, and with social implications such as resettlements. Similar, similarly, growing bioenergy crops in an irrigated agriculture scheme may help improve energy supply and generate employment opportunities, but it may also result in increased competition for land and water resources with impacts on food security. Why a nexus approach? At FAO, we found that nexus concept provides a way to do that by addressing water, energy and food issues from one perspective, but by considering all the sectors equally. The nexus is an important concept to think about how we can balance the different resource users' goals and interests while maintaining the integrity and sustainability of ecosystems. To start off, FAO has developed its own conceptual framework. 
to the water energy pool nexus. The approach distinguished between the resource base, that's here in the bottom part of the slide, the land, water, energy, the capital, and the labor, and the goals and interests that are to be achieved, such as the food, water, energy uh, uses uh, that are to be achieved with this limited resource. It is about understanding and managing these different resource users' goals and interests while maintaining the integrity of the entire ecosystem. Agriculture is only one sector of many uses that, you, that uses the natural resources. And even with the agri within agriculture sector, there are different sometimes competing uh, claims made. This can result in trade-offs and increased competition for resources, hence this messy crisscross of different lines. But it may also provide opportunities to rethink current practices, policies and governance arrangements and the need to identify synergistic uses across the sectors. FAO has identified three areas through which to address some of these nexus challenges, namely by providing evidence, by developing scenarios of developments, and by developing and designing appraisals uh, and response options. This can help to balance the different goals and uses and the approach is really about this, the stakeholder process, the middle one. And evidence is needed to inform and substantiate the discussions on the future scenario and responses. And similarly, scenarios provide a way to explore the potential impacts of different responses. None of this can be done in isolation, but only in this uh, stakeholder guide dialogue with the multi-stakeholders. And you can see the lines are much more streamlined and much more um, organized fashion in, the, in allocating the resource. Now to understand the trade-offs, water is not an isolated sector. Um, we look for optimizing the scarce resource uh, as such as water demand. There's the urban and health uses. Uh, there's the food and agriculture uses. Um, and the wastewater generated from the urban water supplies can go into the growth, the growing of food and agriculture. And this treatment of wastewater uh, from, uh, from urban areas can be using anaerobic treatment processes or nature-based solutions, which is a lower cost uh, method. And the food and agriculture from the treated reclaimed water from municipalities can also recover the nitrogen and phosphorus found in wastewater streams. For industry, the cooling systems used for cooling power plants uh, can be, um, can use closed loop systems and also use more energy efficient uh, power plants. And in the environment, the optimization of environmental flows, also application of best agriculture practices and management of stormwater and urban water management can prevent a lot of biodiversity loss and ecosystem balance and visible economic gains. There are many solutions uh, and every sector has a role to play. Explore the use of integrating energy, water, and food planning, for example. One can explore the use of multi-purpose hydro power dams and integrate energy, water, and food infrastructure. Incorporate the water constraints into energy planning, as well as strengthening the governance system to reform interrelated sectors to reach the optimal uh, balance. In reducing the water dependency and the water footprint, fit for purpose use water can be, can be used for uh, conserving water and recycle and reuse of water operations to reduce um, also food loss and food waste. 
Um, a lot of non-conventional water resources such as brackish and saline water options can be explored and implementing renewable uh, technologies and increasing the economic value of water. In enhancing efficiencies, we can replace the old and outdated power plants and improve the power plant efficiency and biofuel production through um, regulations. FAO estimates that food sector currently accounts for 30% of the world's total end use energy. And more than 70% of that energy is used beyond the farm gate. In high GDP countries, in this middle bar, a greater proportion of this energy is used for processing, which is this darker orange color, is used for processing and distribution. And in low GDP countries, the color, this, this bar reflects that most of the energy is used is for cooking, preparation and cooking. And increasing water productivity and nutrition value in crops at the on-farm level, we've been using remote sensed uh, information with the database of biomass evaporation, uh, precipitation, and land use, and much more to calculate the highest the, the water productivity by getting the highest yield with the lowest water footprint or nutrition, uh, every drop with the highest nutritional value crops as well. Energy includes the direct energy use at the operational level, such as the processing plants, uh, farms, and for example, irrigation, land preparation, but also indirect energy through fishing boats, machinery, fertilizers, and also pesticides. All these are included in our uh, energy, cons uh, energy calculations. FAO and the government of Spain in last November also hosted a non-conventional water resources uh, symposium for agriculture. It explores the fit for purpose, um, reuse, and the symposium fostered the sharing of knowledge and experience from the private sector, research, water associations, governments, and development banks on the fit for purpose use of reclaimed wastewater desalinated water, rainwater, as well as other forms of technologies of fog and cloud harvesting for agriculture purposes. Discussions on the new mechanisms of collaboration between public private sectors and also innovative blended financing present opportunities in scaling up a number of these non-conventional water use. We're currently working with our partners in developing new fit for purpose guidelines taking into consideration of energy and also health safety. The European Union has recently released the regulation on minimum requirements for water reuse, and the US EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has developed a draft national reuse action plan to support water resilience, security, and sustainability. FAO is also promoting policies in preventing food loss and waste um, in, uh, in food streams from consumer side. Um, this is to, re to, to, to reduce the virtual water contained uh, in the various fertilizers and also the, 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 the inherent water footprint um, in landfill, cropland, you know, fresh water systems. This slide shows the global phosphorus flow and the numbers indicate the million tons of phosphorus per year. Um, and in each one of these stages, one can also determine uh, the amount that could be recovered um, from these systems. Phosphorus recovery also prevents um, 
the pipes being occluded or blocked. And also it prevents the fouling. Uh, it creates a, a very bad odor. Um, and, and this removal of these uh, buildup in the pipes um, it can be very costly. And also it uses additional chemicals and also um, is expensive. This material, the magnesium, magnesium ammonia phosphate is called the struvite. And one of the preventative methods from this buildup is to um, extract this in the recovery system. And it takes uh, a dewatered sludge filtrate um, in a wastewater treatment system and it, it can remove 85% of the phosphorus and approximately 10 to 30% of ammonia and if you add magnesium, you can form this precipitate called crystal green, which is the commercial name. And this is a low lasting, slow release pelletized fertilizer. Traditional fertilizers immediately dissolve when water or rain or irrigation hits it, and they disperse quickly and often before plants can absorb them. And these chemicals then run off into water bodies causing eutrophication and causes a, a, a number of environmental issues. And then with this slide, FAO's response in building back better after the COVID includes the sustainable management of natural resources to, to produce more nutritious food with clean water, as well as renewable energy options and mitigating waste at scale and take the output of one production system as input for another. The replicating uh, these systems in uh, various uh, cities, um, it's, uh, it's the new initiative called the Green Food Cities Initiative of FAO. And there lies a number of pilot uh, test opportunities uh, using a nexus approach. I would like to conclude with this slide indicating a few examples of direct on-farm interventions and indirect interventions. The direct on-farm interventions for energy smart agriculture um, includes fuel efficient machines and pumps using precision agriculture and conservation agriculture. In terms of indirect use of renewable energy, use of biofertilizers, and water demand management and the application of non-conventional water resources and also to reduce waste. Then for cross-sectoral planning, the questions we need to ask uh, are, are what are the implications of policies and planning across sectors? What sorts of investments are needed to support the synergistic use of resources across the sectors? And how can we effectively manage demand so that fewer resources are wasted? The effective cross-sectoral consultation mechanisms are needed to ensure the development of concerted efforts to address the problem and to make sure that decisions on water release and allocation, for example, are taken as part of an integrated long-term a multi-sectoral approach. So these series of integrated approaches and, and, and multi-stakeholder platforms um, it can help to identify and manage trade-offs and build synergies, allowing for more integrated and cost-effective planning, decision-making, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Thank you very much for your attention. I will go back to the floor and welcome any questions. Thank you.